what are some ways that we could make a grid? Sorry? Lines and offsetting. Okay. How else? In Rhino or in Well, I guess in Rhino since you have no grass hopper. Lines and array. Lines and array. Okay. Yeah, that could work. Okay. Yeah, that could work.
point, you can either click this little guy right here, or I can double click, type point, and it, it should be orange because it didn't collect any data. But if I want to create a point at the center of the XY plane, I'll just plug it in right there. And now, when I click that point, you see that little X highlight the green? If you want to see it more clearly, you can hide the XY plane. There's my point. See that? So, 
uh, this series, we need to define uh, where it starts, which is uh, zero. We want it to start at zero because it is at zero. So we don't need to do anything to s. Okay? But we do need to define n, which is the step size for each successive number. Right now, the default is 1. And we need to define c, the number of values in the series. Okay. So just so we know where we're going, I will immediately just plug this s into f. Um, and that actually already gives us a series of moves. Do you see that? Uh, because the default here is that the step size is 1 and the count is 10. So what that means is it has moved this point one at a time along the x ten times. Does everybody see that? These are just the default values, okay? But since we need to relate it to the grid of the letter, uh, we need to be able to overwrite those defaults. Okay? So, Let's, uh, let's start with n, okay? Uh, that is the step size, okay? Now we already figured out that that step size is 0.125, right? What would be another way of getting that number without having to type in 0.125? Sorry? Slider? Uh, yeah, we can use a slider. One six. One six. You're getting getting closer. Let's say so for example, if we go back to this right here, you go to a capital. So we have this overall grid, right? And we know based on the assignment directions, what this should measure. Let's say assuming no more knowledge, except our ability to count, we don't know how to define this subgrid. So what we can do is we can relate the step size of this series to how many subdivisions there are within a given measure. subdivisions there are within a given measurement. Mathematically, what does that mean? Just can we set it up as like three quarters of an inch and give it six subdivisions? Exactly. exactly. We're going to take that 0.75 measurement and that's going that's actually going to be the very first external input we're going to give this script is what that should measure. We can do that through a panel, we can do that through a number slider, we can do that through uh, referencing a, an Excel file, all of these kinds of things. So, let's do that. Let's start with, uh, I'm going to start with a panel. Okay. I'm going to type in 0.75. I'm not going to hit enter. I'm going to click off. Okay. I'm also going to give this a title the same way that I changed the title of the slider before by clicking here. And I'm going to call this grid spacing. Okay. Um, I can change the size of this component just by hover over the edges. And now, um, this will be a little bit tricky. If there are six subdivisions um, in, the, in that grid, what number am I going to need to divide by based on the way that series is working to get the result I'm looking for? So, um, 
in this in this script, I'm not defining the squares of the grid. I'm defining the lines of the grid. So if there are six squares in between, I need to divide this overall spacing by It's okay. It's okay. Um, it's it's since we're creating lines, right? If I go back to here, yeah, there's six spaces, but there's five lines, right? One, two, three, four, five. Five lines in between two other lines gives us six boxes. Does that, if you couldn't arrive at that conclusion, that's okay. But does that make sense now? If we were creating boxes, we would use different numbers. Right? We're not creating boxes. We're creating lines. So if I go back to the script here, I can give myself another panel, double click, and the number I'm going to put in here is 5. And I'm going to title this Grid Subdivision. So now, everyone okay with that so far? Uh, so we did figure out what the space between um, the squares is, 0.125, correct? Um, what this will give us is the space between every single line. So that would be 0.75 divided by 5. Nice about Grasshopper is we have mathematical operations, right? You can't really divide a cube by a line, but you can divide its constituent parameters by each other and get a result. Um, and the way that we can get that is if we click on maths. This is a British program, so they say maths properly. Not, not how you say it. Um, and if you go to operators, addition, multiplication, power, division, negative, subtraction. Factorial, modulus, mass addition, mass multiplication, and we even have uh, like actual Boolean operators. Has anyone ever heard of the term Boolean outside of 3D modeling? Okay, it comes from computer science where it's basically a true false logic statement. That's what all these are for here. Um, so you can click it here. We know we want division, or you can double click, type division. This component. And all we want to do is divide A by B. And that result gets us 0.15, which is ultimately the step size that we want between each of these series of moves. Plug that in right there. And as soon as I do this, we're going to see the short. Right? See that? The default for that move was 1, but we redefined it as 0.15, or a better way of saying it is we redefined it as the quotient between the overall grid and the subdivisions. <coughs> if we replace any of this, um, any of this component uh, with number sliders here, it would give us more control to um, change parameters of the grid, uh, but for now we'll keep them static. So we know that we're moving each one of these by 0.15, but how many times do we want to do that? Okay. Um, how did you come up with that? Yeah, that's a good way to go about it. So he said eight. 
Because if we go here, <coughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight major grid lines. The answer is not eight, but we're going to start with eight. <coughs> and that's, how, that's uh, what we have in the X. So let me uh, bring up another panel. Type eight. I will name this. Tricky, right? Because we are counting zero as one. 
And this, this confusion continues, I promise. <laughs> So then ultimately, that, that result should go into C, right? When I do that, there's all, there's all the lines, right? Uh, later, we will, we will sort of uh, separate all of these into every other six one so that we can differentiate between the major and minor grades. But for now, this is, this is all of it, okay?
panel. Here. And uh, let's look at, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Let's say fifteen. But it should it should match whatever your reference letter is. If it's ten or twelve or fifteen. When your if your width is not wide, if it's uh, six or seven rather than eight, make it particular to your letter. Since we are moving in a different vector, and we use uh, the x vector in series to do <coughs> one set of moves, we are going to need a second series component for the y. Not only because we're using a different uh, vector, but we're also going to end up using a different y count, which also means we're going to need another expression I can't, if I plug in these different uh, numbers in through the same, uh, the same path that we have here, um, it, would, it would move this point uh, based on this in this direction. Right? So we need to have two of them to find the x and the y. Does that make sense? I can't put both of them into one path. Don't need to define S again, right? Because we know that we're starting from zero. Um, the N again is the step size for each successive number. And what number is that again? Point. No. We're looking so in the, so the way that we defined it here. Subdivision was uh, uh, the overall grid divided by the number of subdivisions, right? Is that going to change here? No. No. So I can take this output again and just plug it into this other component. Times 
for the number of subdivisions plus one, which is what I have here. Right? So if we're going to do this in the y, I'm not going to use the x count. I'm going to use the y count. Uh, hopefully this doesn't confuse you, but we're going to plug y count into x. It doesn't really matter. You can switch them up. You would get the same result. Uh, but for consistency's sake, we'll keep these overall grid numbers as x. And then y, we already have our panel component for that, which is 5 that goes into here. And that ultimately goes into c. <coughs> and we're getting something really funky, and Bob will talk about that. But everyone is OK with that so far. Yeah, so what kind of was that number again? Uh, this one I typed in uh, 15. But that will depend on how many uh, how many grid lines you have in your library for your letter. So we're going to do the check here. Instead of, instead of connecting this one to that one, I just copied it. So, so I, this so is an error, it. but everyone oh, should okay. have this. Does anybody not have this? You don't have that? What if my line turned red? Let's double check. Subdivisions. Oh. I just copied it. There's just two grid subdivisions. Oh. 